Hello, my name is John, and today we're looking at the map. Not just one map, but Lino Germany's DCS Beacon map. And this map basically allows us to see all the NAV aids available in the current terrain, which are NDBs, VORs, and ILS systems. And as we don't have any GPS in the F86, or any other navigation systems that can help us, we have to rely on those NAV aids to get from point A to point B. And this is what I want to show you today, how to plan and perform such a flight between those NAV aids. So let's get started. Okay, first things first, let's start with the available navigation systems in the F-86 Sabre. Being such an old aircraft, there are, there's not much to talk about, but uh, we have one system and that's the ADF, the Automatic Direction Finder. And the ADF can be used to tune into a frequency of a so-called NDB, a non-directional beacon, which is a ground station, and can be compared to a radio station which sends a continuous signal. And the ADF can determine in which direction the NDB is relative to the aircraft. On our map here the NDBs are marked red and yellow. Red if they're next to an airport and yellow if they're freestanding. You can see two uh, NDBs in the top left corner next to an airport as well as in the bottom right corner. And in the middle of the map you can see one yellow mark for a freestanding NDB. And we're going to use those NDBs to plot ourselves a route from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. We will start our flight at the Tsukumi airport. It has two NDBs, one with the frequency of 995 kHz and one with 489 kHz. Then we will head for an intermediate NDB and it has the frequency of 525 kHz. And after that we will head for the destination Senaki Kolki and it has two NDBs as well and one with the 156 kHz and one with 129 kHz. And with only a few waypoints, the complete route is quite straightforward. So let's move on to the summary of our waypoints for today. And as you can see, um, we have three waypoints for the flight today, and I only listed one NDB per airport, because we only have one ADF receiver, and we don't have the capability to listen to the second NDB at the same time. So we don't actually need it for our navigation. I've written down each station's name and next to that their frequency, which I normally also write on a post-it note so that I don't have to remember it during the flight. And next to that, those are the decoded Morse codes and they are going to be very useful and you will see why right now when we hop over to the cockpit. Welcome to the F-86 cockpit and as you can currently see we are on Tsukumi's runway 1-2 and the weather is quite a low overcast, which is perfect weather for navigation, radio navigation training, as you're planning to do today. But first, let me introduce you into the different gauges and panels you need to control the ADF system. Down here, in the lower left corner, you have the main gauge, basically, which uh, shows you the direction towards the station, as well as this fancy scale on the outside. On a new aircraft, you would expect this outer scale to adjust itself to your current magnetic curves, but this one in here is a free controllable one. It is not slewed by any gyros or any magnetic sensors. And basically, if you want it to face direct the, the correct heading, you have to turn that in yourself. And as you can see, turning it, the needle itself is not affected to that. The needle sitting in the middle has an arrow and uh, basically will point towards the station and if it points straight up the station is straight ahead if it points to the right the station is right of us and if it points to the back it's behind us and obviously if it's pointing to the left position the station is left of us and um, then as said the, the magnetic compass outside the, the not the magnetic compass the magnetic sail outside or the heading scale outside you can set it manually if you so wish then over here we have the main control panel but um, currently we don't have any power on the aircraft because uh, our engine is idling too low see we want to keep the idle or we want to increase the RPM a bit and we want to get above 40% so that the generator kicks in and we actually have power available to us else if you are below I think 38% or so um, th these systems won't work so keep that in mind that you just have the engine not on idle when you try to use the ADF systems 
Okay, so let's uh, first turn the volume down a bit and you will s soon see why. And then turn this one to compass, which is the mode we are going to use today. And as you can see, or as you can hear, you hear a, you can hear a static because you are currently not tuned to any frequency. So let's do that now. As you can see, here we have a couple of ranges. We have the 100 to 200 kilohertz range, the 200 to 410 kilohertz range, 410 to 850 kilohertz, and 850 to 1750 kilohertz range. And our first station, or the first NDB, is in the 410 to 850 kilohertz range. So let's switch to that, which is done by right clicking the selector here. As you can see now, we are on 630 kilohertz and we want to go to 489. So we use this tuning knob down here to go down to that frequency. And as you can see, the needle up here is spiking up, and this is that uh, this is indicating the signal strength. And when you tune in a frequency, you always want to make sure that this needle is pointed to the right most or as far right as it can, indicating best signal reception. Okay, let's turn further down to our frequency 489 kilohertz. As you can see, the needle is poking up quite a bit because there are quite a lot of frequencies in this frequency band or this frequency range. And um, we will get we are getting very close now, and um, we can look at our ga uh, pointer here, and it's turning. And if it's turning straight ahead and pointing straight ahead, we are facing the right station, because um, the first the Sukumi NDB is just along at the end of the runway, maybe a, a nautical mile away. And we also can identify it by listening to the Morse code, which we will do now. And we're looking for short, long, pause, short, 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 long. So see if it sounds that. I'm not sure about you, but I definitely not very good at understanding Morse codes. But uh, given the indication of this indicator, we're we're pointing towards the right station. But um, as you see, the pr tuning process is quite. Um, it, it's quite a high effort process you might not want to do too much in the flight if you don't have to so we will go ahead and tune to the second station because we will overfly this station here in a few seconds after takeoff so we will go ahead and tune into the intermediate station which is at 525 kilohertz which is just right up here and here be you have to be very careful because as you can see the needle is pointing up quite a bit and receiving quite a lot of different stations, so we want to make sure we are on the right one. And um, we, we are watching this needle over here, and um, the station is about at a heading in this direction, about a heading 100 or 90, so this is not the right station. So we will go ahead and tune into the next lower frequency. Maybe that's the one we are looking for. We can all also identify the Morse code, which is long, short, short, pause, short, long. And again, me not being very good at identifying Morse codes, but I'm pretty sure that's the right station. And maybe the needle is a bit off, but um, the ADF system is quite inaccurate, so you often have to get very close to get an accurate reading, so don't expect anything. But um, we can see this is pointing in the channel direction, and uh, the signal reception will only get better if we take off. So uh, let's do that now, and I will talk to you after the takeoff. And as you can see, we have taken off from the runway right now. And to get to the station, we just want to make sure that the needle is pointing to the 12 o'clock position, which which it will do in a second. And as you can see, we're already in very bad visibility. And um, we now are pretty much IFR. Yeah, I expect that we don't have anyone to vector us right now. But um, that doesn't keep us from flying to the station. Just wanting to keep the wings level. And I will do arrest the descent, uh, the climb, sorry. And now you can see the needle is pointing more or less to the 12 o'clock position. And I will speed up the way there because it will take me about 3 to 4 minutes. And now we're right now above the clouds, which uh, is quite a nice view, but 
Uh, we will fly there and I'll talk to you back then when we're arriving there. As a small side note, not really part of this tutorial, but uh, I would put it in here anyways. At this point I was uh, about to realize that I was heading off into the wrong direction, at least to some extent. And as it turned out, there are two NDBs on the map that share the same frequency, or about the same frequency. One is 520 kHz and one is 525 kHz. And with the method provided to actually dial in the frequency, um, I made a mistake here and was heading off for the wrong uh, NDB. And um, this just shall point out to you that always check your Morse codes. It's uh, very important if you do navigation, especially um, on longer distances uh, where you might not directly know that you're flying or that your course is wrong and that you're flying into the wrong direction. Just, just to keep that in mind. And uh, back to the tutorial in a second. And as you can see, what, about, what is about to happen is the so-called station overpass. The needle, um, currently being a bit deflected to the left, will start to turn very fast because we are get passing by very close or over the station. So um, this is always the indication that you're now past the navigation point and you want to tune into the next one. Which I will do right now. As you can see, the needle is moving very fast. This is the indication that we're right in the station. And um, let's go over here and tune in 156. First we switch the range again. Then we go ahead 156, that's 15. And that's 156. And uh, we are listening for long, short, short. Let's see if you can hear that. And that was long, short, short. I'm not sure if you could hear that. It's a bit tricky to pick up, but um, as you can see the needle is pointing straight ahead, uh, maybe a bit to the left, and we will fly towards there. And here again I will time accelerate until uh, I perform the station overpass, and um, then we will just fly back to the station, descend through the clouds, and we will see where we end up. And normally you could go ahead and calculate where you would have to start your descent so that you don't have to fly over the station and then turn around. But um, we will do it right this way, just to keep it simple in this tutorial. And as you might can see, it's a bit hard to notice on the video, the needle is getting more and more sensitive and this means that we are getting close to the station. So we, what we actually will do, we'll start our descent right here and um, hopefully when we pop out below the clouds in a few minutes or a few seconds, we'll be right above the airfield or at least um, above the runway center line, maybe a mile out and the airfield be will be hopefully to our left here. And then we'll see how that ends up in just a few seconds.
and as you can see the needle is starting to turn very fast meaning that we have overpassed the station and we'll just accelerate our descent a bit with the speed brakes and we will start a gentle left turn and uh, we should have the runway more or less towards this direction maybe a bit more um, the left or right or more, more back there once we pop out under the clouds which should be in a few hundred feet so let's keep an eye on the instruments not to crash the last few seconds of the flight this uh, IFR flying always um, needs quite a lot of pilot attention and you have to, be, have to be very on your toes and you can see the ground popping already up already a bit um, and here is one of the stations and the runway is right here so basically uh, I maybe have turned a bit far in the clouds but uh, this showed us we could get from one airport to another using two NDBs. I mean this is just a demonstration video and I would highly recommend you try this out with quite a couple of NDBs over a long distance. It's quite interesting to do so yourself and it can be quite a challenge in adverse weather or by night. And um, I hope you liked this video and I wish you a very nice day and fly safe. Goodbye.